let's start in the college ranks. And in the college ranks, there's some news out of Austin that, um, listen, it's probably a good time to be Steve Sarkeesian. Yep. Steve Sarkeesian, of course, led the Texas Longhorns to the college football playoff last year uh, and now uh, is going to be a little bit richer. Mm -hmm. He is going to be the third highest paid coach in college football. Uh, as he will uh, ink an extension, entering his fourth season, he will ink an extension to make more than $10 million per year Ugh. starting in 2024. Uh, then I will say this. I think it's a nine-year extension, but who cares? No. Like, I've, st I've stopped caring about the years part. No, because it doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. Nobody's contract is going to ever expire. No. Like, nobody's... The, the, the age of especially a high-profile coach... Mm -hmm. Not getting his contract renewed, they're just gonna fire him. Yeah. So and the likelihood of anything over three years getting yeah. extended yeah. nowadays is rough enough. So so here's here's the the actual contract is starting in twenty twenty four he'll make ten point three million dollars. Every year through twenty thirty he'll make a hundred thousand more dollars. So it's ten point three, ten point four, ten point five, ten point six, et cetera, et cetera. Um, now. Now, I think we saw this coming. Oh, yeah. This is a gentleman who probably was due for a raise because of what he was able to do. That's just what happens in college football in the year of our Lord 2024 is that if you take a team to the college football playoff, you get a raise. You're going right? to rip the get a benefits. Raise. Furthermore, I think that there was a big – the opening at Alabama – Mm -hmm. I think we all, when that happened, when Nick Saban retired, all of us said, hey, what about Steve Sarkeesian? Yep. He's from the, he's got, uh, he's got uh, ties to Alabama. He's got ties to the Nick Saban tree. Mm -hmm. He's obviously had success. What about Steve Sarkeesian? What about Steve Sarkeesian? Obviously they don't hire Steve Sarkeesian, but the writing was on the wall that the agent was certainly going to say, well, I don't know. Absolutely. What, what, There's no doubt he was in. Yeah. Del Conte's office Absolutely. the next Saying, morning going, so, all right, how are you going to keep how are we gonna, How are you going to keep me? Because if not, I'm shipping him out to Alabama. <laughs> so that is, that is, we're kind of going from like known, uh, known knowns to speculation, right? Mm -hmm. Because now we're in a full on speculation because I'll tell you what I think this contract extension is really about. I think this contract extension is really about the Ohio State University. I'll tell you why. So the head coach at Ohio State is Ryan Day. Mm -hmm. Ryan Day's been very good. Oh, yeah. Ryan Day's been very good. But Ryan Day has lost to Michigan, mm -hmm. didn't make the playoff last year, mm -hmm. has not won a national championship. Ryan Day, if you talk to Ohio State fans, I have a number of them in my life. If you talk to Ohio State fans... Not huge fans yeah. of Ryan Day. She's just getting stale. Furthermore, and I'm, here's a spoiler alert for everybody. This offseason, from a national perspective, is going to be a lot of Ohio State hype. Mm -hmm. They bring back a ton from last year's team. They bring back a ton, and Michigan's going to be reloading. And new coach. New co well, yeah, new coach in Michigan. Michigan. Yeah, there's a lot of, like... Ohio State is going to be the hot team that everyone talks Especially about. Especially expanded playoffs yes, too this year. Absolutely. Everyone's going to be talking about Ohio State mm -hmm. as like one of the favorites, if not the favorite, to win the national. Which to be fair has been the case a couple different times now <laughs> throughout the past five years. Let me see. Uh the odds are so twenty twenty four this is for twenty twenty four season. Yeah. So the, the odds are out. Georgia's first. Okay. Ohio State's second. Okay, then Texas, and then Alabama, and then Oregon. If Ohio State does not, I would say at the very least, win a playoff game, mm -hmm. right? So that would make it to even then. Even like, then, I think they that win, they need they to get to the final four. If they win a f yeah, I think they got to make it to the final four. If you can get to, to if you can get to the semis, then I think they're they have okay. to make it to a semifinal. Mm -hmm. If they do not at least make it to a semifinal, I think they're going to fire Ryan Day. 
Yeah, because then and you would be butted number one in the preseason mm-hmm. all the way throughout the year if you were to just crap the bed in the playoff. Mm-hmm. Then and it's like, what are we, what are we doing? Then with this roster, then I think they're going to fire Ryan Day. Mm-hmm. And if they fire Ryan Day, Steve Sarkeesian is going to be a name that comes up. Yeah, especially if they were to make so, it to the Final Four again. So this feels like, for me, a preemptive strike. Maybe mm-hmm. I'm connecting dots that aren't there, but I when this came down, I was like, okay, that... That makes a lot of sense for, mm-hmm. you know, he was due a, a contract extension. He, he got it. And so Steve Sarkeesian now extremely, extremely rich. Well, and the other thing real fast I feel like is when, you know, obviously Saban retires and then Harbaugh leaves to go up to the NFL. It always seems like every now and then we get to that wave of like one generation kind of going mm-hmm. out. One generation starts to come in and it's like Steve Sarkeesian's at the top of that next yes. big generation. So, let's move to the high school ranks, because a couple of things I want to talk about in the high school ranks. First of all, is news that came down today. It's on TexasFootball.com. I wrote it. About the seven schools in Texas high school football that are appealing their UIL district alignment. So, UIL realignment was back on February 1st or 2nd? First. 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 February 1st. UIL realignment came out. It's crazy. Oh, my gosh. Wow, we did a live show. Blah, blah, blah. Um. But we warned you, we were like, this is this is not the end because there's still an appeals process mm-hmm. for a number of districts or a number for, for every team. The appeal process is available to every team. Now, there's two types of appeals. Let's go through this. Well, you know, every podcast is somebody's first. The two types of appeals. Yes. The first appeal is what's called a local appeal. Uh, Pickle High School is in District 3. They want to be in District 4. They take a, they take a, a vote of District 3. And District 3 says, yeah, it's okay. You can leave. And District 4 says, oh, yeah, you can join. It's done and dusted. UIL, just just tell the UIL they'll write it down, that you get those approvals. If there's approval on both ends, mm-hmm. both where you're leaving and where you're going, you don't have to involve the UIL. Yep. The second type is what we're going to be talking about now, which is where you don't get those approvals. There's some pushback from either the district you're leaving or the district you're joining, and then it goes to the UIL, and specifically the UIL's District Assignment uh, assignment Appeals Committee, which is going to meet tomorrow in Austin to talk about seven schools that have filed a, uh, a, uh, a, a, an appeal. Of them, of the seven, this is just uh, very interesting, six are in 5A. Really? Mm-hmm. Lufkin is appealing. I don't think this is a surprise. No, not at all. Uh, Lufkin is appealing. Lufkin was in District 7, 5A, of course, Division 1. We talked a lot about that district of being of kind of this large swath from, you know, Cleburne and Joshua south of mm-hmm. Fort Worth all the way to Lufkin. They are instead appealing to go to District 9, 5A, Division 1, which is with Angleton, Barbers Hill, uh, Baytown, Sterling, Port Arthur Memorial, Galveston, Ball, those teams. So they want to go. And, and we talked about Lufkin a lot. Yeah. They're on an island. Mm -hmm. They're saying, please send us southeast. Don't send us northwest. Which makes sense because even though the time of travel might be Mm -hmm. very similar, you know how much easier it is to go from Lufkin to southeast Texas and hop on a highway Mm -hmm. and just go than it is to try and make it through Dallas over to Fort Worth, south of Mm -hmm. Fort Worth. I don't know last time you've driven through Burleson and Joshua. That is stoplight hell Mm -hmm. right there. So (laughs) It is. Okay. So – if I were to guess, and this is that's all we're doing here is we're guessing. Now, by the way, if you if you crunch the numbers, they have a good case from a travel perspective. They're saying, yeah, that that kind of makes sense. I I would say that they are, I would say that they are likely to get that. Yep. That would be my guess. I think that they would be likely to get that alignment mm-hmm. change. Okay, so now let's talk about another one. So. Uh, um, Lufkin wants to join District 95A Division 1. Angleton wants to leave 95A Division 1. Angleton has appealed. They want to join District 115A Division 1, which was the Crosby, Friendswood, New Caney Porter, um, Spring Woods, uh, Fort Ben Kempner, uh, kind of this, this kind of big looping district that goes all the way around Houston. Mm-hmm. They want to do that. They want to join that district. Or they, they want to join that district uh, from the district that they're in right now, which is uh, very kind of all along the coast. Um, this one is going to be tight. I would say that the UIL will pro- – basically, Angleton to Port Arthur Memorial is a long stretch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess. Uh, 
I think that's 50-50 on whether or not they're going to get that. I think they've got a chance, but I think it's it's it's. Well, um, it might be one of those things that if the addition of Lufkin was to mm-hmm. give that an even better chance yeah. of happening, it's it's one or the other. And by the way, because Lufkin yes. makes sense. I think I think there is a chance that what they do is that they go okay, Lufkin, you go to District Nine, Angleton, you go to District Eleven. Yep. I think there's a chance of that. Now that would create a one, two, three, four, five, I was five six, ask how many seven, are in eight. 11. That would be a nine-team District in Eleven, which is a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> Uh, something to keep an eye on. I will say this. But would it make Angleton, it a nine-team district if they both stayed in District 9? Yes. There are... No, it'd be 18 district if Lufkin joined District uh, Okay. Okay, I feel like that hurts One, Angleton's two, three, chances four, a little bit. Five, six, seven. Yeah, yep. there's seven. So maybe from a from a competitive you balance or a eight. number, you, they might have eight and eight. Yeah. We'll see. That's not something they're going to take travel into account first and foremost. Right. I would say Angleton's a 50 50. Lufkin likely, Angleton's a 50 50. Yep. I would One thing to that. keep in mind with that, I think they are moving, they are asking to leave a more manageable district to enter a di- more difficult district. With yep. Friendswood, with Crosby, with New Caney Porter. Yeah, I think, Crosby I think that, was down last year, but Porter, Porter was pretty good. But here's the thing speaking of District 11 5A Division 1, Spring Woods wants to leave 11 5A Division 1, and they want to go to District 10 5A Division 1. So 11 5A Division 1, uh, we talked about that. That's kind of the Houston area district. Right. And they want to go to District 10. District 10 is basically... Let me see. Oh, yeah, that's Houston ISD. It's Galena Park and Houston ISD kind of right smack dab in the middle of it. Um, so they're going for a lot easier of a district there. They want to move... That, they'll be moving to a, an easier district. Here's the thing, though. It would not make a lot of sense from a shape perspective. That right now Houston, they they have this that that District Eleven, which kind of loops all the way around, around Houston. Yeah, which is great because then you don't have to deal with traffic on the inner side. <laughs> it would look different if Spring Woods goes goes to there. So it's because because of Fort Ben Kempner that they have down there. I don't know. That seems that's very interesting to me. And another thing about that is I believe that would create a not, another nine team district. So keep an eye on that. So one. literally all of those are just domino effects. Yes, they're all what, all like, of them are connected. Those all are the five A division ones uh, are connected. Okay, so now let's go to five A division two, where there's a couple, two more. Uh, I believe there's two more. Yeah, there's two more appeals basically. Victoria West. We pro we thought this was coming. Mm-hmm. Victoria West. If you remember, Victoria West got sent to San Antonio. Victoria West is kind of on an island all by themselves, um, and they got sent to San Antonio with the um, uh, with yeah with San Antonio Veterans Memorial, with uh, Alamo Heights, with Harlandale, with McCollum, and with uh, and then Bernie and Kerrville Tivy got sent to San Antonio. They want to go to the coast. They want to join fourteen five A Division two mm-hmm. Corpus Christi Carroll uh, King Miller Gregory Portland. I think that's pretty likely. Yeah. In my opinion, those tweeners, I think that the UIL is probably going to support that appeal mm-hmm. and say, we, we'll send you to the coast. It's, it's a done deal. Well, and probably, too, because I'm sure those were what they were on the yes. fence about in the first place, too. <laughs> it's going to be bringing up bad memories. <laughs> now, here's the interesting part of this, okay? The other two teams that want to appeal in 5A Division Two are also trying to leave 13 5A Division Two. Harlandale and McCollum. Want to want to leave thirteen five division two? That's the Bernie Kerrville Tyvee San Antonio Veterans Memorial Alamo Heights district. Yeah, it's a difficult district. And they want to go to twelve five a division two, which is basically San Antonio, San Antonio ISD. ISD. Um, it's the sa- if, if if you were to do that, if you were to allow Victoria West out, then it would make sense geographically from a from a footprint perspective. Mm-hmm. But here's the problem: that would only leave. Five teams, four. No, that would only leave four teams in thirteen five A division. And two. I guarantee you, that would be a nine team district. Bernie, in Tyvee, San Antonio Veterans Memorial, and, and Alamo Heights. Heights. That would only leave four teams if you let Harlandale, McCollum, and Victoria West leave. They're gonna. Here's this is my official uh, projection. Mm-hmm. They're going to let Victoria West leave and keep the other two. And they're going to say sorry, Harlandale, McCollum. Because how many the San Antonio ISDs? District One, is two, huge. Three, four, five, five six, six, seven. 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 Okay, seven. but if so you added two more, then you're nine. going up to a nine-team district and, and then have, leaving and you, another one with four. Yeah. Um, you're also asking them to switch regions, which is another thing. I would, for me, from like right now, I would say Victoria West, 
likely, Harlandale McCollum, unlikely. Yes. And then one more, and this is kind of off the, a little bit off the beaten path, but Smithville is going to, um, is appealing in 4A Division 2. If you take a look at 4A Division 2, Smithville is in District 13, 4A Division 2. Haran Monavaro, Gonzalez, Gerald, Lago Vista, Salado, Smithville, and Wimberley. And if you take a look at that district, where Smithville is, is located, I'm pulling up District 12, or, yeah, District yeah, 13, they are kind of on the far west side of that district. They want to move over and go join the, uh, is it District 11? Is that where they want to go? They want to go to District, yeah, District 11. They want to go to District 13 to District 11. That is the Madisonville, Sealy, Belleville District, LaGrange. Um, I think the UIL will probably grant that, yeah. in my opinion. Now, what you know, because if you look at the numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it would create an eight team district, which is no fun Mm-mm. in 4A Division Two. That would be the only reason, in my opinion, because from a from a travel perspective, it's kind of a wash. Right. Uh, in fact, Smithville might be signing up for more travel when they're going up to, to Madisonville. Um, I'm interested to see the case that they make in front of them. So those are the um, those are the appeals. We'll keep you posted on what happens with those appeals process. That hearing is tomorrow, by the way, tomorrow morning. Another program, Texas High School football program, has suspended their football for the next two years. Austin Lassa has uh, suspended their next uh, for the 2024 uh, realignment. Uh, of course, the Raptors, the Lassa Raptors, which rocks. Yes. Um, they have uh, they they began its own football program in 2020 after splitting off from Austin LBJ. Um, Derek Lewis was hired in t- in summer 2022. He's led Lassa to an eight and 12 record, including six and four in 2023, which is a minor miracle down there at Lassa. Yeah. Um, but from what we understand, likely the district. Um, they're probably having trouble with numbers, plain and mm-hmm. simple. That's usually what happens. It is a 5A Division II district. It's 11 5A Division II. And so as a result, now LBJ. you are going to... Yeah, LBJ. J, uh, uh, Maynard, or Maynard New Tech. Maynard Senate. New Tech, yeah. Um, as a result, you are... The biggest, the biggest issue here is going to be all these teams now have to find one more non-district game. Yeah. And whoever had them scheduled now has to find another, uh, have to fill their schedule. Of note, and Matt Stepp notes this in his article, Austin ISD has not had an athletic director since 2020, since September. And so when Leal Anderson moved to a new role. How has that gone so under the radar? Um, there has not been a full-time athletic director, and they have wow. not named an interim athletic director. So it's a bit of a rudderless ship down there in Austin ISD, athletics-wise. Right. Um, and Austin Lassa has... Uh, is right now not going to play football for the next two years. Okay. Uh, and finally, one more small note. Uh, La Mesa has made a hire. Uh, La Mesa, the Golden Tornadoes, How about that? have hired Anna defensive coordinator Efren Ramos to be their next head coach. You may remember him from uh, leading Anna, pitching a shutout in the mm-hmm. state championship game against one of the most highest po- high-powered offenses in Texas high school football on Chapel Hill. Um, and uh, La- uh, Ramos is a Plainville native, a Plainview native, rather. Uh, so he's from that part of the world. This is an opportunity to go back uh, relatively home. He's a West Texas guy. Uh, so he's going to be the next head coach of the La Mesa Golden Tornadoes. So congratulations to Coach uh, Efren, uh, Efren Ramos, the new head coach at La Mesa. And those are some headlines from across the state. Of hey, thanks for watching this clip here on YouTube. If you like this kind of stuff and you want more of it, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And remember, you can watch us live every weekday at noon at TexasFootball.com, Facebook, Twitch, or here on YouTube. And if you want more of the best coverage of football in the state of Texas, check out texasfootball.com and become a Dave Campbell's Texas Football Insider at texasfootball.com slash subscribe.